what's going on everybody it is monday happy monday i hope you guys are having a fabulous week so far um i just I, i'm very very excited today is monday january 17th 2022 okay so of course we're excited welcome to what's the 411 um today's show is actually being brought to you by um bbl tv black business live tv okay this is bringing our culture community and commerce together on one screen bbl tv is a space for us by us to advertise connect share stories and news content don't miss out on the opportunity to share your story indulge it in others or advertise your products and services today make sure you connect with blackbusinesslive.com Okay, BBL TV is the news stories we uh, live brought to you live 24 7. So, what's up to everybody coming in the chat? What's going on, guys? We're really, really excited for our guests today um, that we have coming through. Um, so, okay. all right, guys. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate it. Come in. Hey. Hey. Hi. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me good? Yeah. Let me move this up so we're a little bit up more. There we go. All right. All right. So how are you guys doing? Happy New Year and happy Monday. Yes. Happy New Year to you guys too. Happy Monday. I'm I'm excited about this conversation. Let me just lean back. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves to the audience? Tell us a bit about yourselves, who you are, and what you do. Um, So my name is Toshiba, last name Billings. I am a mother, um, his everything. Um, I am an author. Um, We are talk show hosts. We are kind of a little bit of everything. I am a hodgepodge of a lot of things. I would say I'm Jamaican, so that, I mean, that says. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. All right. (laughs) He's like, all right, all right. Um, I am Robert, a.k.a. Robbie three times, and I am, let's see, I am a father. I'm her everything. You are, babe. I'm a (laughs) banker. And I'm an agitator. I like to say he that. agitates my life for sure. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> all right, all right. You're going up a little bit on our. Oh my God. Okay. Can you still see us? Jeez, I was like, <laughs> I can see you guys. Awesome. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Here. Like, we were going to um, say no matter what. Good. Like, we're not giving up, you know? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, talk to us about the show. Tell us what the show is about, what it's called, and, you know, how you guys got started. Okay, so the show is called Fuck Your Feelings, the show. Um, and it's really about changing the conversation around black relationships. And, um, when we got together, um, one of the things that we realized very quickly upon getting to know each other was basically our commonality in the idea of black love, the idea of community, the idea of communication, the idea of rebuilding community that we've lost by starting with the family. Um, the show name came from, we were having a conversation one day and he literally turned around to me and said, fuck your feelings. And I went, (gasps) (laughs) 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 and then it took me 10 seconds. It took me about 10 seconds. And then I went, okay, because I got what he was saying. The moment we get into our feelings, especially when we're in a conversation with our partner and someone we love, it can 
basically turn the conversation sometimes in a very bad direction. So after the immediate shock of what he said, we finished what we were talking about it, it was, and it was straight. So when we decided to sit down and I put together a bunch of names for the show, without a question, he said, the show is going to be called Fuck Your Feelings. So there we go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I just I think I think that's just the key to getting to the bottom of things is you 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 have to take the the feelings and the emotions out of it and just keep drilling down on so what what's next why is that those type of issues and eventually you'll get to where the rubber hits the road at and that's really what I'm about. He's a, he's logic like he's so logic he's a finance guy right like his. His thing is all finance, degree in ep economics, MBA in international finance. He was also an athlete. He is just like logic trumps like feelings all the time. So if there's ever a moment where I get caught up in my feelings, right, he basically says, listen, are we, are we going to have this conversation or not? Because I can't actually deal with you right now in your feelings. So let's come back and address it when you're not so we can actually have the conversation. And for I think a lot of women, I think a lot of people, period, that's difficult. But for us, that's our communication style. And sometimes it's off-putting to people because they're like, he must not love her for him to say that. And it's actually like, he loves me very much. And this is why we're able to have these conversations because I and us are not caught up in our feelings. And, you know, and from my perspective, too, I just think we live in a world that like the last 20 years or so, it just seems like everything has become about feelings, like feel everywhere. You hurt my feelings. You offended me. You said you wore that shirt. I don't like it. And I, I just again agitator. F them feelings. <laughs> what are you really saying? And a lot of times it just be noise, like personal preference and noise. Yeah, feelings are like the fluff. Yeah. you know, once you get through the right, it's like once you get through that, it's like okay, now we can really deal with what the what the real issue that is. That part, you know? right? That part. And it's hard too. It can't be easy all the time because sometimes we just want to feel those feelings. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're in it, we're stuck, and then it's like, no. But if you really want to get to the root of the issue, you have to just get to the and meat. feelings. And listen, feelings are important, and it's not that we don't get caught up in our feelings. But when there is an important conversation on the table, the last thing we want to do is make a permanent decision on temporary feelings. And how many relationships have been lost because you make permanent decisions on temporary feelings. Very true. Very, yeah. very, very true. 100%. 100%. Um, so what are some topics that you guys talk about? Like, I mean, you talk about ads. <laughs> there are so many, but just give us a couple of them, some hot topics that you guys have on your show. So one that was really a fire that we've had people talking about my name in these streets was the fact that, <laughs> that people were really looking at me sideways, was the fact that we had a whole discussion about open relationships, right? And, what, sure. what, and the fact that we had a conversation about what it would look like if we had an open relationship. And let's be clear, we're not trying to have an open relationship, but with our relationship, there's absolutely no topic of discussion that's off the table. And I mean, no topic. Yeah. And so one night I was just laying in bed, I'm like, what would it look like if I had an open relationship? I'm like, you know what? They talk about the 80-20 rule. You give me my 80. Let me go find my 20. And he's looking at me like, um. I love that. It would look like someone gets that. It's uh, funny. Here was the right? thing. Because we are literally not. I think he took a second. He's like, what is this like woman trying to do? Um, but because, again, we don't lead with feelings, we were able to get through the discussion. We started talking about what it would look like, and we realized that is not for us. Mm -hmm. Like, no, thank you, yeah, not yeah. about it. So that's what we talked about. Um, the other one we talked about is monogamy and whether or not monogamy is natural. Um, that, was a, that was a big topic. We talked about blended families. Um, our most recent topic was actually um, love is not enough, and that... Basically, did people think that love was enough to sustain um, a long-term relationship? So we've had all kinds of crazy topics, but that open relationship one <laughs> was one that like, <laughs> people were like, I can't believe that they would have such a conversation. And I'm like, Here, here's the thing that I find interesting about people saying that they want their partner to be their best friend. 
I know that I yeah. talk to my best friend pretty much about everything. That woman has seen me naked. Okay. Uh, she's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and with my child, everything. Like, she has seen everything. We talk about everything. If you want your partner to be your best friend, why do you limit the discussions you have? Because you're caught up in feelings. I have very strong feelings for my best friend. God forbid anything happened to her. Like, I don't know what I would do. It's the same with him. So for me, it's like there's so many people talking about, I want my partner to be my best friend, right? But they don't have the conversations with their partner as if they're their best friend. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like a two-way street, you know. You can't say nothing is off the table and then get your mouth tight when someone <laughs> brings a conversation that, might not be you don't even know where it's coming from you just like uh, okay i guess we're talking about this <laughs> um, that's usually his response <laughs> yeah i guess we're talking about this today <laughs> <laughs> but i guess that's true you know you have to lay it all out on the table in order to have that person to be like you know you're all you're everything your best it friend both. right it makes sense it has to go both ways yeah for sure um, so what was the conversation around monogamy since you guys brought it up? Like, what do you guys think about so, that? So, and I, I, listen, here's mm -hmm. the funny part is I'm the one who brings up most of the discussions and people would think it's him. But I, again, nothing's off the table. So here is my view of monogamy and it might get the audience riled up. Monogamy is Let's unnatural. Go. Okay. Monogamy was brought in to keep people together for business reasons. It has nothing to do with love. Monogamy is a social construct. If you look at the mammal kingdom of which we are one, there are very few monogamous animals. Now, that does not mean we do cheating. Absolutely not. We are not about cheating, but we also understand like cheating is not a deal breaker for us because that's actually what we're going to be talking about coming this Thursday. Someone couldn't understand why our number one rule is no disrespect, but at the same time, cheating is not a deal breaker. They couldn't understand it. I had this whole back and forth with someone of saying, listen, just because I say no, like cheating is not a deal breaker, isn't an open invitation for him to cheat. But let's give you a scenario that he gave on the show the other day. As women, we know what it's like as black women to work our asses off and make it to that seat at the table, right? So you're in an organization, you've spent 15 years, you're now the VP of acquisition. Well, one day the big boss comes in and shits on you that day. You can't do nothing wrong. It's just the whole day is a freaking crap shoot. But you've spent 15 years of that company Terrible day. Do you walk away from your career? That's a hard decision. Most likely, no. You don't walk away from so your So you spend 15 you years in a marriage and your man has one indiscretion. You walk away from the marriage? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people would. It depends, I guess, on the situation. And I guess if, you know what, I guess it would depend on the, if it's a one off, you know, that's the part, or if it's something, I think that's the, that's the disrespect, cheating, it's a disrespect. They yeah. think serial cheating. Yeah. I understand that if we're together for the next 30, 40, 50 years of our life, we're imperfect people. Mm -hmm. And so anything can happen. And I wouldn't want either one of us to have the insecurity in our relationship to think one mistake, one misstep and all of a sudden we're out the door. I'm not leaving this man because he cheated. However, what I did tell him, because I'm Jamaican and I will cut him. I said, let me tell you something. <laughs> okay. I said, let me tell you something. The one thing we do agree <laughs> on is I said, listen, if we are ever in a situation and you did have an indiscretion and that indiscretion is walking towards me in a public place, you better whisper in my ear real quick before she gets there. Because if that woman introduces herself as whomever, I'm able to say, oh, Sarah, he's told me all about you. I said, don't let no woman, I said, do not embarrass me on these streets. That I will not do. Do not embarrass me on these streets, but I'm not going to leave him just because Sarah has come up to me, but I don't do disrespectful cheating. So I don't do that. 
Yeah, I guess, yeah, it would be, it would depend on the circumstance that the cheating, how, like how it all went down, you know what I mean? Like, what are the circumstances? So what to, what happened? I need him like, to talk give about me the something one that one. we talked about the other day, because he said something that blew people's mind on our show. Tell him, baby, tell him what you said. You had the segue or something. <laughs> you know, what about. Well, I'm assuming you're talking about the comments that I made about it's the difference in between cheating and choosing, and First off, you have to figure out what that person has actually done. Um, cheating is stepping outside your relationship, however you want to slice it. Um, you, every, you know what it is in your relationship. Um, it could be having dinner with somebody. It could be considered cheating. It could be renting a hotel room and doing the whole thing. But that's one thing and then you go home and everything is normal and then there's choosing where it's really like an alternative life going on you know what i mean like it's a whole other relationship going on and choosing is when you say oh my god you know you find out about samantha and he says oh okay and you're angry and you're upset and he starts packing his bag and he goes and stays at samantha's house that's that's choosing. That's something very different. Isn't it all choosing though? No. Like, wouldn't it be? It really possible? isn't. No. I think. See, I think the part of that also that I don't really understand why I think personally monogamy is rather unnatural is one we live longer. You know, two hundred years ago people were dead at like forty five. You know, um, till death do you part wasn't that much of a commitment. Now we live in until eighty, <laughs> ninety years old. Like, yeah. The stakes done went up significantly for everybody because it's that's a lot longer stretch or road to go with someone hoping that you guys are going in the same direction because I think that's a big ingredient for long term relationships is you have to be growing in in the same direction. I can't be headed east and she's headed west. We'll never get to the same place unless we travel around the entire world. So someone has a question for you, babe. Do you have the same stance on cheating? Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's, and I know the difference, you know, it, look, see, here's the thing about love. Like everybody can agree. You love both of your parents. You got four grandparents. You love all of them. You love your siblings. You love your teachers. You love the people at church. You love your friends. You love all of these different people in your life. But then we get to romantic love and it's a singularity. That doesn't really. Yeah, I think everybody looks at that a little bit differently. When you're in an intimate relationship, it's just different than when you're loving your parents. Why? Why? Well, love. I mean, love why? I think it's because it's, it's intimate. No, yeah, it's, it's different. Question. Why? Because it's an intimate love. It's intimate. It's it's physical. It's more than just. You love your mom, you're not laying in bed with her, you're not up in her arm, you're not, you know what I mean? You love your siblings, you love your brothers and sisters. It's different, it's just a different, it's just a different thing. You know, it's a different type of love. It is love, but it's definitely not the same. Intimacy, I think a anybody might agree that when you're intimate with a person, it's a different feeling than when you're not intimate with a person. You know what I mean? It's just, it brings a different vibe. You're connected you know with the brings? person. Feelings. Of course. That's what. It and I mean, even and again, the listen, two become one. Exactly. The two and, become one. And I agree. One. Two becomes one. Um, and I agree with you. Yes, there are different types of love because that's what we got to um, this week on our show, right? We talked about Come true on. love versus unconditional love, right? And that was a big thing in terms of what does that look like? Um, true love you know, again, it's your person and it's all of the things that you talked about. It's that intimacy, it's all that. And unconditional love, we determine, you know, with one of our guests that unconditional love generally is the love between parents and children, right? That's generally the love that people think is the most unconditional love. Now, at the same time, do I think it's possible to love more than one person at the same time? Yes, I do. Again, but there's a difference between him choosing another person and loving another person. It's always about the choice. Our agreements, like I choose him every day. And he made a joke the other day that some days I don't choose until around noon. Okay. <laughs> it's like it's like eight, nine, ten o'clock. I'm not quite sure, but about noon I choose him. Right. But that is that is something that we talked about. Every day we wake up, it is a choice. 
Love is a choice. Relationships are a choice. We choose each other every day. Every day is an opportunity to make this relationship better. And that is why, again, we have a no disrespect rule. And we also don't go to bed angry. Generally, if there's something going on, by nighttime, when we're in bed, when all of the devices are gone, he holds me at night and we have a conversation about whatever was going on in the day. I am not allowed to leave his arms and he does not let me go. Right? There is none of this. All of this, you did it. I'm just not that woman either way. But there's none of that contentiousness between us, right? We might have our moments where he's got to walk away or I've got to just be like, you know what, girl, like, that we ain't gonna say that. But when it comes to contentiousness, I think we've had one major argument um, in our relationship. Um, and that's because, again, communication and the choice is absolutely every single day because you're gonna have daily heartbreaks. You're gonna have daily disappointments. When you truly love someone, there is no perfection in love. He is imperfect and so am I. And I think people go into these relationships with these blinders and think it's all gooey, gushy, you know, rainbows because we've been fed this Disney narrative. That is not how love works. It's practical. And so every day we go into this, I understand I could have a heartbreak, but I'm going to get up the next day. I'm going to choose him anyway. That's how I look at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we know, rewind some notes in the back in here? And again? I would just to, to piggyback <laughs> on that to just interject a little masculine energy. Thank you, babe. Um, <laughs> intimacy. I, I agree with everything both of you said about intimacy, but you're intimate with your parents. You're intimate with your friends. Those are intimate relationships. Also, I think what y'all talking about is sex, and sex. Oh uh, yeah, when I say mind. intimacy, that's yes. exactly yes. what I'm talking about. That's, and let's yeah. be just 100 yeah. percent real. Men and women don't place the same value on sex, and we're always going to have an issue with that. Yeah. So, so then I guess I seen Sam put in the chat um, lust versus love, pretty much and so yeah. That's pretty much the argument. So if you were to, let's, for example, say that, you know, a man is to step out and cheat, is that lust that he's just, you know, is that the choice that he's just choosing lust for that, that maybe that hour or whatever? And if, then yeah, if it's just, just cheating, yes, it's I, lust. I, I, if it's choosing, then it's lust. Let me spin the argument a little bit. Why would a man who truly loves his wife who truly has a good family, built a nice home, all of that. And then he's in Vegas and it's a like the movie Hangover. Why would a man choose to do that if it was anything other than lust? I don't I don't know. It's him moving. <laughs> it's him moving in that particular moment. He's like, man. This stripper keep rubbing on my thigh and acting like, oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> I never thought that this would happen to me. And again, he loves his life. He loves his wife. But, but that's not a choice. That's not a choice. It's just, it's just lust. There's no choice and in the lust. It's just lust. lust. That's just where it, it, it's like being in a fight almost. When a man feels like fighting, it's hard to talk him out of it. <laughs> Same thing as when a man is feeling pulled in a direction, it's hard to talk him out of it a lot of times. And that's where you have to be careful because you don't want to lose everything either. And I think a lot of the times we want to project our feelings onto our partner. We're, we're men and women for a reason, right? He doesn't yeah. think and act like me. I don't think and act like him, right? There's the feminine and the masculine. And that is, and that is, and that is the, and that is the thing that people have to remember. We try to superimpose our thoughts and feelings on our men. Men move in a certain way. I do not try to superimpose my feelings on him at all. Mm. At least I try not to. No, you, you. I mean, well, give me a grade. I'll be like, okay, baby. Okay. The phone is on fire tonight, too. Why should a woman or a man? tolerate lust i think that that's an excellent 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 question um it, it's it's one it's you shouldn't i'm not advocating that there's a different see what i what i painted was a, you're, man shouldn't be on guys trips 
three weeks a month. You feel what I'm saying? That part Look, who do you think keeps more? A guy who's at the strip club five or six nights a week or the guy who works from home and is always at home? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So, Just guess. Just guess. To happen, <laughs> a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't be happening is going on before you even get to that point. You know, like why, if right. you're a dude, again, that you love your wife, you love your life, you love your situation, why you have all of these available women in your face all the time? That might be a question. And that, I guess, goes back to the disrespect, right? Yeah. Always return to rule number one. It is the guiding principle in our relationship. And the reality is, Bravo says on the show, we've never defined what disrespect looks like. It's not like we have a list and we pull it out and we're like, this is disrespect, right? <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> it's like solid men. Where do they sell that? Amazon. <laughs> that is hilarious, girl. Um, but we don't have... No, you know problem. why? Because sometimes men are not always so forthcoming with the information. You know what I mean? You're out here, you're telling it, you know, the way it is, but not, you don't always find that in in men all the time. They're not always out there just, you know, spilling the tea, letting us know what it is, right? I'll give a little advice on that for the ladies, though, just from a male's perspective. Like, you you have, you have to, that, that's, that, you have to apply that out of a man. Like, right now, it, men feel attacked, like, just for being men. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, he has all kind of wild thoughts. Like, again, my favorite comic, Patrice O'Neill, he used to have the joke that men are, you know, the, the thoughts come from our stomach, and then they stop at our heart for editing before they actually come out of our mouth. And women, y'all just, it's a reflux. It just comes straight on out, you know? But if we said what was truly in the pit of our stomach, no one would ever be want to be around us. That is a good, Sam is on point. So Sam asked this question, would you, and this is to you, mm -hmm. would you accept being informed in public that your woman slept with someone you're about to cross paths with, like in the Sarah analogy? Remember I talked about yeah, women Yeah, I would have no choice to. Again, you can't say fuck your feelings and then when it hits you in the face, you got your face tight. I think that's like, that's like some harem type of mentality or something like that, where I got 12 wives and I smack them for being, you know, looking at another man or something like that. I don't, I don't have that energy. If it could happen to me, why couldn't it happen to her? So you have to be open to the possibility of just, look, I don't think either one of us is looking like for someone else to be with. We, you know, again, we joke, we we're actually not joking, but we're, we entertain the idea of a third person but that would be someone yes throw it all up there <laughs> you know what i'm saying but that's not you know that that's just not something that's present you know we are the constant we are again like we say on the show we're going to do this every thursday regardless we're going to do what we do regardless we're going to have these conversations regardless we just decided to open our living room up a little bit and share that type of stuff because I think a lot of the times people are not having the conversations they're supposed to be having, right? People are not, I think, and I think it's interesting because I'm going to bring up somebody we, yeah, I was just watching him before we got on the show, Uncle Kevin Samuels, right? There are a lot of women upset with what Kevin Samuels has to say. Um, and they're saying that, you know, men should stay out of women's business. Well, women, unfortunately, are not in women's business enough. Because again, we have been given wrong information about how to build our families and love our men. So we always say, okay, then, they don't want to listen to Uncle Kevin, we'll sit and tell them about it. Because I think there's something different about hearing it from a man and a woman who are together who are saying, listen, I said something the other day, I'm going to drop it on the show because I've been working on my content. I said to people, Rob is my job. That Rob is my job. Rob is my full-time job. I used to work 60-hour weeks. I kill myself out. I was the director of this, the region manager of job. I was doing this, this, and whatever. Okay? Rob is my job. That is how it works. There is no, I, I have other things that I do, but it's all in the advancement of us. Outside of that, like I'm, I'm a part-time business advisor, I would have never taken that job if he didn't agree to it. And I know a lot of people go, what oh. the hell? 
is she yes. talking about? Like somebody actually said, that sounds like what he probably beats her. <laughs> 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 like he over here flagging me because I say this stuff. But it was one of the things that we decided if we wanted to move this along, what was important was our family. Family was the dynamic. Family is the constant. And he said, at the end of the day, I would rather you work for the family business and make sure this family runs right than go out there and give somebody else 40, 50, 60 hours of your time. And so he is my job. And so, you know, we have two shows. We have a radio show. I have, you know, eight books. And again, I have a, a part-time job. I invest like 30 hours a week. But he knew that job is actually still to advance us because of the social capital that I get from being in that position. But he's my job. Like right now, I'm trying to find, so, you know, Rob's got, I said, you know, a degree in economics, he's got an MBA. He also used to play basketball professionally. So I've decided that, you know what, hmm, I think we want to move differently in 2022 and he should get a, another job because he's, He's at a certain level and he needs to get hired. So my job is to find him a job. I have a full spreadsheet. I have an email that I run for Rob. I send out all the application. I respond to all of the emails. All Rob does is show up and does the interview. Literally, he knows the place, the time. He clicks on things. I send him a sheet. And to a lot of women, that's crazy. Hours of my week, I was exhausted in else. Hopefully you can still hear us. A little buffer. We have a bit of a buffer, so we're just going to pause and wait. Plus, mm -hmm. I hate looking for jobs, too. <laughs> so I wouldn't even get done if she didn't do it. I don't know if you can hear us. We have a bit of a buffer on your end. So Everybody. Are we good? OK. <laughs> yeah, we're good. I'm going to do my Yes. No, no. But um, so talk to us then, because that's a huge thing, especially right now in today's society. People are, um, you know, they talk about these gender roles. Some people believe in gender roles and some people do not believe that there should be any gender roles. So clearly you guys are, you know, you have your stance on that. But talk to us about it. Um, can I go with that? Yes. First? If you believe in gender roles, you should be with somebody who believes in gender roles. If you don't believe in gender ro roles, you should be with somebody who doesn't believe in gender roles. But if you're sitting on either side of that fence trying to convert someone to the other side of that is kind of like, that's why we see these crazy wrecked up relationships sometimes. It's like, it's like LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. Ain't nothing you gonna say to a person about either one of them to make them change their mind. Some people say LeBron, yeah. some people say Michael Jordan, but there's not a single bit of information you're ever gonna present that it changed someone's mind. And I think that's the, the problem sometimes with these modern you know, relationships is people go and convince that I'm going to be the one to convert this person <laughs> into what I want to be. And that usually comes from the woman's side, right? I'm going to show him that I can be this type of woman so he will he will pick me and all of those things. If you fundamentally do not have the same belief system, I'm sorry, baby girl, it's just not going to work. And so very quickly when we met, we talked about this. What do we feel about this? I grew up in a traditional home. My grandmother would roll over in her grave to think that he cooks for himself and he just it takes, you know, I'm feeding the child before him. And he, sometimes he doesn't even know where his socks is. Like, <laughs> like, like wow. all of these things, my, you know, my grandmother would be like, what are you doing? And so would my dad. My dad said, listen, a man is to protect and provide and a wife is a helpmate. And so, but a lot of women, here's the thing. A lot of women want to be wives before they'll even show their helpmate. We're not legally married. We, we are married because we live together and that's going to happen. We're very clear about where our relationship is going. But for a lot of women, it's like, I'm only good to, going to do that for my husband. How do you get upgraded to a wife if you haven't shown that you can be a wife? What's your wife resume look like? You know, and I've said that to people. If, if a man were to not see you, because again, a lot of us have pretty girl, you know, syndrome. Like, and I'm going to be chosen because I'm pretty and I'm going to be chosen because this, this, and this. But if a man could not see you and you had to put out a resume 
to the men that you wanted? What's on your wife's resume? And it's not all the masculine traits that we've been taught. It's not I'm independent and I make my own money and I bring the table to the table and I like men I don't care about none of that. Yeah. Like I say men, especially black men, you know, and I don't usually try to speak for the group yeah, or yeah. nothing like that. But I use the analogy that, uh, you know, a lot of women are trying to be Wonder Woman, not realizing that men want Mother Teresa. And what I mean by that is peace. Like that, not somebody just running down bad guys and lassoing them and throwing them in jail. And that, that's cool. But most guys just want peace, peace, calm, that supportive energy. Yeah. And that's important to um, to realize because, as you mentioned, there's a lot of women in relationships. Like they see a man and they immediately think of what they want to change that man into or what the potential they personally have for that man. And that's where the breakdown of the relationship is because he's never going to be what you want him to be or what you feel like you can change him to be. He, he is who he is. So it's a part of, you know, meeting people where they are at. Like mm. where they really but are. I think that's a trust thing. She, if you're with a man like that, you don't trust him to lead, mm -hmm. right? I have to trust that he's going to lead us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. If I don't trust that he's going to lead, it means I will not follow him, which means that we're on two different paths in life. Like he said earlier, if, we're, if I'm going east and he's going west, how do we get to where we're going? And so I had to trust that he could lead. And I think, you know, what the audience needs to know is we're sitting in Arizona right now. I left Toronto um, because my man was in Arizona. You're supposed to follow your man. Right now, like I said, we're looking for other jobs. If that job goes in another state, I'm packing up our stuff and we're moving to that other state because I'm going with my man. Wherever he goes, I'm going with him. That's just how it, do you know, again, that's how it works for us. For some people, it doesn't. And so you find what works for you. But thinking that you're going to convince a man to go on your path, it often doesn't work for a lot of women. And if it does, it won't work long term. Well, here's the thing. You know, I think Beyonce jacked us up real bad with that song, <laughs> Upgrade You, because it's not natural for a woman to upgrade a man. A woman, a queen cannot make a king. A king is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know what I mean? Like, that's something a man does independent of anyone. His father, his mama, his children, whatever. You know? So the idea that a woman is going to turn him into what he could be in her eyes, I think the more productive way of looking at it, it would probably be like, again, identify the areas in his life that you could come in and supplement it. Because that's what she did, and it made herself so invaluable to my life. You know, again, these, I, I was getting like, my interview schedule was crazy for one point, like two, three a day at sometimes, you know what I mean? Because of her, I, I see one job I want and apply for it. And I'm done. <laughs> like that, that's it. Um, and, 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 and I'm not going to make a whole lot of effort to get that one either, you know, <laughs> but with her, it became fun. It became, it, it became so much more. And now we're like, just, we're just really on it. Like, let, let's see where we can take this go. Because I, I agree with her. I could be doing a lot more, but it's all about that person to take a shot on you, give you an opportunity. You know, we, again, we live in this world where everyone wants you to have experience, but how do you get experience without someone giving you a chance to show what you can do? And that's the same thing in relationships, you know what I mean? You gotta give a person an opportunity to be themselves. Very, very true, very true. Yes, well, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, if you guys are just jumping in, we have the lovely Tashiba and Rob from F Your Feelings <laughs> right here, talking about all of the things, all okay? The all of the things, all of the stuff. you know, everything. Okay, yes, lots of hot topics. Um, you guys also talked about blended families. Talk to us about blended families, or do we have a question here? My takeaway from this meeting is open communication to be on the same page as your partner to build Amen. that trust. 100%. Amen. Blended 100%. families. So um, blended families are very interesting. <laughs> um, and you have to make a decision 
um, how involved you want your partner to be in the upbringing of your children. So our situation currently is I have one um, biological child, but she's 20. So I have a grown adult. Mm -hmm. um, Rob's got uh, two children um, under not 20. Um, we have custody <laughs> of one and she's 12. Um, so I have a 12 year old stepdaughter. She calls me mom. Um, before the situation even happened of us living together, we really kind of sat down and said, what does it look like if she lives with us? What, 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 what does everything look like? How much authority do I have? All of those things were important. And as he's the biological parent, but I was like, if I can't put my stance in how I raise children, then this isn't going to work. And I mean, he can talk about it because he's got... Here, silent. Oh, no, you're, you're just <laughs> answering the question. I was just going to let you know. Like, but again, because I have an adult child, it's very different, yeah, right? Like I have a whole right. adult child. She comes and she visits and, you know, they do their thing. They've got their own little relationship. They're, they kind of have the same spirit. And me and my stepdaughter, my daughter, we have the same spirit. We, you know, born in the same month. It's it's kind of interesting, but go uh, ahead. How I would answer the question probably would be what blended families would be. Whether you're the male, whether you're the mom or the dad bringing children, especially younger children, into a relationship, you have to understand. You, I don't think it makes sense to ask for a person's help in raising your children, okay, and then telling them how they're going to do it. So uh, it's a trust type of issue. If I thought she was going to be waterboarding my kids, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be with her. You know what I mean? So ridiculous. But <laughs> because I trust that, you know, I'm not going to come home, they're going to have cigarette burns on them <laughs> and stuff like that. You know what I mean? We, we can kind of move forward and that uh, I don't have to look over her shoulder about it. And, it nah, I'm, I, I, and I'm being really facetious, but we do live in a world where people do some really foul stuff to children. Right. You know what I mean? So again, if you're not in a space where that trust is there with, and again, that, that's what I value most is my children. So if, if I wouldn't trust her with that, that's, it's something wrong with me or her. One of them, we got to figure out. And I think I think sometimes it's difficult for single mothers when you know men come into their lives because again, when you you know when I was a single mother, for me it was I wasn't just looking for a boyfriend; it was a potential stepfather, right? And I think if you are in a situation where you're a single parent and you're you know looking for a partner, it's going to be very difficult to say you know especially for a man, take care of my child, but you don't get to discipline the child. It was the same with us. Like, you know, it, this was kind of trial and error. And we had one situation where he brought something to me and said, you know, let me be very clear. If you think I'm the mom who's going to say yes to everything, you got the wrong one. Yeah. So you need to decide how this is going to work because that's just not how I, how I go. And it was quickly understood what needed to, be, needed to happen. But it's very difficult to say, I bring my child, take care of my child, but you can't tell my child what to do. Like, how yeah, does that, that work? That's kind of crazy energy in and of itself. I ain't going to front. And no disrespect to anybody that that's how they move. But how do you cohabitate with your person? Because I ain't living in no house with no kids that I can't tell them nothing. Like, that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And I would not demand that from another adult. If my cousin was crashing on that couch, my kids better do what the hell he tell them to do. Because there's a certain amount of respect for elders that I think we've lost in this world. But again, my cousin wouldn't be in my house if I thought he'd be telling my kid crazy stuff like, let me rub on you or stuff like that. You know what I mean? So again, it's about trust. It's about knowing your situation and, and who you be having around, your, your life, your children, your wife, all of that. Because trust is fundamental. Um, and I think this is where communication happens. We have very much a, a, a communicative style, period. We have the same thing with, with our daughter, right? Yeah. It's very, we sit down when she is in trouble. It isn't your trouble. Get, we literally have a full conversation about, okay, why do you think you're in trouble? What do you think the impact of what you've done is going to do moving forward? Like we go through the whole thing with her so she understands mm -hmm. how to move and operate in this world, right? Like 
a family is a little community. And if you can't get your little community right, how are they going to go out into the larger community and do what they need to do? So again, that's why it was so important for him. Like, I'm not happy to send you out into the world giving nobody 60 hours. You have enough to do in this house to make sure that our community is good, to make sure that I'm preparing her for the world that's out there. And a lot of the times our young children are not effectively prepared and adequately prepared to navigate the rest of the world. And, you know, I did that, you know, again, my, my biological daughter, I say she's a blessing to the world. He says it all the time, right? Um, that's the thing, right? He says all the time, like she is, you know, very lucky to have me, but I'm lucky to have her. She was just such a good kid to raise. Um, but the reality is children need structure and they need a foundation so that they can go out and go out there. Too much talking meant manas man. What does that mean? I lost, lost me. I don't know. Too much manas. I don't know. If it was. Yeah, but no, 100%. No, I hear what you're saying. You know, it's, it does boil down to the trust factor. Um, you know, that's basically what a relationship is. It's all about trust. If you don't have trust, you don't have anything, right? You have to be able to trust your partner. And I, and I get it. I get how trust is, is difficult because going back to your earlier thing about intimate relationships with your partner, I remember sitting in therapy and this was really important. And, you know, I had to go to therapy because I, I had to be prepared for my person. And that was an important part of my journey. And I remember uh, my therapist saying, in order to truly love, you have to be prepared to get hurt. There's absolutely no guarantees in love, right? Love comes with hurt, whether we like it or not. And so you cannot go into a situation completely guarded, thinking that I need him to show me how much he loves me to love him back that doesn't work. So if I was going to go into this, I had to go into it with, with, listen, I am going to trust you. I'm going to respect you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to be loyal to you. I'm going to do all this. It wasn't, you had to prove to me that I could trust you. You had to prove to me that I could be loyal. I already had to give that, right? You don't go with a job and say, I'll learn the skills. Generally, they want you to have the skills <laughs> before they give you the job. So why do we go into relationship thinking differently? So, and I think that was, I think that's important. Ladies, I get it. It's hard. It is so, that is, it's hard to be open, right? Like it is hard to be open. And, you know, I, in one of my books, I said, you know, I, I, you know, falling in love with him was like swimming in the deep and not knowing how to swim. Like I went into the deep and prepared and ready to go. And it was like, I have to do this because, you know, he talks about, one of the things he loves about me is my obsession with him. Like I'm obsessed with him, like completely like I kiss his face. It's the weirdest thing. Um, <laughs> some of the stuff that I do, but it loved, he loved me more because of it. And I get it. It's easier to guard our hearts, but the reality is no man wants to be in a situation with a guarded woman because in his mind, your suitcases are already packed. So the moment there's a problem, you're ready to go. You've invested nothing into the relationship. A man wants to feel like you've invested. You don't get returns on your investment if you have no money in investments, right? It's the same with a relationship. You don't get returns from a relationship if you've invested nothing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very, very true. Um, so for Rob, like when you were looking, like both of you guys, when you guys were ready, like she said she had to get ready for this relationship. Were you already ready for this type of relationship or was there some work that you had to, to do to get yourself ready? No, you were just no, ready. No, I wasn't ready. Was I wasn't thinking vote. about a relationship to be honest with you. I wasn't even worried about it. I, I was really just in my masculine energy of like, you know, women are what they are. Um, I'm, a, you know, again, I played ball. Um, I had a lot of opportunities in my youth of getting to know a lot of different women. He so. was a hog. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out there. Like, you know, I never really had that like pick me energy or nothing like that. So it was just like, nah, I wasn't thinking about a relationship at all. Like one of our infamous kind of arguments was, you know, like, again, guys in my situation shouldn't even be worried about no relationship. Again, I was rebuilding my life and picking up some pieces and 
like I like to tell her, I could not ignore her though. You know, she she came with not red flags, but green flags. You know, where it was just kind of like, oh wow, um, you have to look at this a little closer. You have to give this a shot. You 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 know, um, you 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 just don't walk right? past certain opportunities. You just don't. I'm a businessman. You know, at the end of the day. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Hey, thanks. Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So what set her oh, what set her point. apart, right? Well, again, I, I've I've never really been in a situation and again, like I said, I've gotten around a little bit where it was the mental aspects of it. It was that I felt that there was a a political where it meets like just perspective, where it just meets like view of the world like there was just certain ideologies that she understood and she kept up with me when I expressed those so that it felt like she would be an incredible representative to me I felt I remember one time I told her I was like if I had a really important business meeting and I couldn't make it I feel comfortable sending you feeling knowing that you would represent me not you and I feel a lot of women, if that was the case, they'll take that meeting for you, bro, but they gonna represent her. She's gonna represent herself and what she's talking about and your whole plans and game plan is right out the window. And that's that's why I couldn't ignore her. And funny enough, that was actually one of the sweetest things um, he said to me. <laughs> Rob, Rob isn't the most romantic. If you're looking for who, um, he's not gonna give you that, but that, that, for me was a big thing because I think a lot of the times we don't think about the practicalities of a relationship because we're all in our feelings and woo and ah and all of that stuff. A relationship is a business, whether we like it or not. And I know that's so I not know, romantic, right? Mm -hmm. right? Like it is, we actually have a relationship contract for the next three years. We have a verbal relationship contract of how our relationship is going to go unless something changes and we have to revisit it. But we stick to it. We see the vision. We see the goal. It's practical. Oh, there we go. You're, you're breaking yeah. up again. So oh, there we yeah, go. <laughs> you know, Microsoft won't buy Lulamon because they like the logo. They thought the logo was pretty. They thought it was cute. They thought the clothes are nice, you know, like Mergers make sense in the business world. Shouldn't they make sense in the interpersonal world too? You know, like why would a airplane company buy a scuba diving company? It, it would seem like they don't know nothing about what the other one does, you know? And that's where coming back to what was it about her, you know, they're, they're, she was in touch with certain I would say revolutionary type of ideas that I have because I just think that the only way that things really are going to change is to break people out of their status quo thinking. And I'm not talking about that everyone's an individual snowflake bullcrap. I'm talking about like, no, like we really are like, we're, we're a community, we're people. Yes, what you do matters to me and what I do matters to you and vice versa, that type of energy. Oh, we have a question. We will not. So they want to talk about the relationship contract. The relationship contract. <laughs> that was actually yep, a yep. big topic on our show. Uh, many people um, were interested. You're, you're scrolling again, so I'm going to wait and hope that you're still there. Um, can you guys let us know if you can still see and hear us? I just want to make sure that we're good. I do want to answer that question. Are we good? Okay. Yes, awesome. we're good. We're good. Um, the relationship contract. Okay, so we don't actually have it written down. Uh, so I'll start with that. It's a verbal relationship contract. But part of the relationship contract was the part that I spoke about earlier in terms of me being at home. Um, and that in order for us to get to where we needed to be, that was a part of it. It meant that basically... Mm -hmm. Rob employs me, <laughs> like whether, and again, not romantic at all people. Um, but again, Rob is, Rob is my job and it's like, he's my employer. And so part of our three-year plan was, this is kind of where we want to go. And in order for um, us to get there, this is the structure that needed to work for us. 
again, if it changed, um, then that would be fine. But it also has to do with the age of our daughter, um, right? That was important because she's in a critical time, all of those different things. Um, and we also have a, a younger son um, um, in terms of, in, as a family dynamic, this is what's needed to push us forward. It wasn't an individual thing. And let's be clear, with a relationship contract, no one wins, okay? Just like in business, no one wins. If someone's winning, it's not a good contract, right? And so there are things that you're going to have to give up on both sides because it's for the betterment of us. Yep. And I think that's the part that people have to think about the practicality of a relationship. So one of the things that was important for me is I am like a rolling stone. Like I, I, I get itchy. I don't like to be in one place. I just, I'm like, I have to be going. Like I, I'm like, if there's, if there's progression somewhere, we've got to go. So I will not be in North America probably for, you know, much longer, maybe the next three or four years and I'm out of here. That was important. Rob has played ball internationally. I think he's lived in seven international countries. I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. And so he was on board with that. Wherever we need to go, because the opportunity exists, that's where we need to go. It wouldn't work if Rob was like, no, or I'm like, no, this is what I want. And I need to be in this place and I need to retire here. And this is how, no, if an opportunity comes by and it's for a year, I guess we're living in Dubai for a year, right? If an opportunity comes up and it's X, Y, Z, that's what we're going to do. So that was even a part of it. It was that push and pull, that give and take about what works. And again, the contract, it, it is. So it is fluid based on a couple of things. And it, and, and it has to do re really what happens with all of the ventures that we're involved in. So again, you know, we have, um, I founded two talk shows. I have eight books on the market with the ninth one on the way. I have a radio show. Again, it's his job because he's in finance. Like there's all of these different things that make it fluid. Um, but again, unless something big happens, it's static. So it changed based on the circumstance. But me going back to work actually is the one thing that will never change. Long story short, <laughs> I make X amount of dollars. Once these shows and books and all that other stuff starts making more than the X amount of dollars that I make, then we'll look at another situation. Until that's then, a, we'll keep it just the way. That's it actually you're so this you're such you're so pragmatic. That was just, I went on this like long rant. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, let's wrap it up. One sentence. That's it. This is what it is. <laughs> Yes. Okay, because like, I mean, you guys did speak earlier about the fact that love is not enough, no. you know? No. So you know, talk about that statement. Well, because it's just, again, there has to be a, a coming together to two. Like, like one of my favorite, like, you know, I like my little logic, philosophy, you know, kind of examples. He's a doctor. She's a lawyer. Both high power jobs, right? Who stays home when the kids are sick? Yeah. Tough question. The doctor, because I mean, the doctor would know how to. <laughs> yeah, that would, that, at least that has a, uh, that, that's gender non specific. So cool, you know. In my world, I just say mama tends to stay home with the kids when they're sick, unless, yeah. and dad kind of as a default winds up having to do it. And I'm not knocking that. I'm not against that or anything like that. But that's the whole point is like, what point does it make to have this amazing... Okay, let me make it more simplified. How are you a successful woman if your family is not in order? Yeah, he loves that point. Because I don't think a woman has a greater role than making sure her family is in order. Historically, what women do. And that's how we define success in our relationship, right? Is how's the family dynamic going? How are the children, their education, their upbringing, their, their discipline, all of the things that are we happening, fight right? like cats and dogs, that ain't good for the kids, you know? Right? Like it, yeah. That ain't good for the pets, hell. 
You know what I mean? And so we define success that way in our relationship. It has nothing to do with how much money we're making. Yes, we have aspirations. Again, he's got his whole background. You know, if I'm a bet on anybody, I'm a bet on this man right here. And we have all of that. And that, that looks good on paper. But what looks good on paper isn't the reality of what life is. And so when we said love is not enough, I had to like him more than I love him. I could love him from Toronto. We could have a perfectly fine long distance relationship. I can, cut you off. Right? Like, I can, I can get on a plane, <laughs> go through the COVID protocols, all of that stuff. In 30 years, I may not love him as much as I do today, but I always, I will always like him. He is one of my favorite people. He is my best friend. He's the person that I share my life, my world with. Um, because I like him. He's funny. He's cerebral. He's, you know, has this sarcasm about him that makes me go like this sometimes, but it's endearing. Like he's got all of these things that I fundamentally like in people. I just also happen to have fallen in love with him. But if it was just love, I would have rolled my suitcase out of here a long oh, time man. ago. Man, I just, I'm, I'm going to just double back because you got me thinking about just what she's, how, you see how she's talking about how she likes me and all that stuff. And then we had the conversation earlier about cheating, right? How I cheat can change how she likes me, if that were even the case. You, you feel what I'm saying? So again, I would not want to play with the way that she talks about me. You know, that's not something I would want to gamble. I wouldn't throw that up on the table and say, double or nothing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> like that. So again, there's a certain amount of caution when it comes to when I think when you're in a space that you want to be in, when you're in a good relationship, you're in a good space, you're going to conduct yourself with a certain amount of caution because I would rather go too short. I'd rather stop short than go too far. I, I, and I think that's kind of the rule of thumb for most things. Like, you know, if you have a great job, you know, you might on occasion be like, you know, I'm going to go to the movies this afternoon. Like, I ain't, I ain't killing it or nothing like that. But you're not going to do that like 12 days in a row or nothing like that. Because then, you know, you might not have that great job that you love so much. Oh, that, was a, that was a good statement, baby. You never said that. That's so sweet. <laughs> But no, and this is why we talked about love not being enough. You know, people have been in relationships with people who love them but don't like them. Mm. I know he has his previous one. He was, and that was and one of the ugly, things we, you know? yeah. we came back on was yeah. it was important that we didn't repeat the same mistakes that we had done. Or I like to call them missteps, mm. right? We had some missteps in our life and we wanted to ensure, like we put everything out on the table. Like there are things that we talked about. I think that we talked about finances. We had spreadsheets like, we knew what was up with each other. We talked about like everything under the sun because it was important to ensure if, if we're going to move forward here, here is me and here is me on a platter. And, and, and can we, can we create something great together? It's like, it's like a recipe, right? Certain things just do not go together. So then you do not bake a good cake with recipes that you, if you don't put sour cream necessarily in your cake, right? You might really love sour cream, right. but it doesn't go in the recipe. We really made a good recipe. And when we sat down and we looked at the practicality of where I wanted to go, what we wanted to do individually, it worked collectively. <laughs> like, I look at it almost like for real. Like, how, how would this change? Imagine if people looked at their relationships like, imagine a world, a real estate market where there was no remodeling, no renovation, no nothing that the way the house was built is the way the house had to stay. Do you think people will willy-nilly buy houses? No, they would look for the bedrooms to be positioned where they wanted them. They'd look for the closets to be where. They would inspect every single nook and cranny of that house because they know once they bought that house, I can't do nothing about it. We should look at relationships kind of along that same vein. And that's what I learned along, like, like I said, those missteps, those journeys of just, and that's where the rule of no disrespect comes because you can withstand anything other than disrespect. Like, but once that road, you know, once that dam goes down, it's like, it's like New Orleans, you know, like the levees when they bust, the water is coming, you know, and that's how you get into that. I don't like this person no more. I don't like them because that disrespect and then got toxic and then it's just
crazy, you know. So we both knew up front that was the really the only rule that really mattered is like, ain't no disrespect. You don't disrespect me, I won't disrespect you. And chances are, even if we decide to go our separate ways, we'll do it amicably. And and that allows you to, you know, I'm going to put in quotations, fight fair. Right. Right? And I think, you know, I say to people that this is important for people to understand. There are times that he makes me very mad. Mm -hmm. Like super mad. mad <laughs> he's an agitator. He's like, he's like, an anno he is annoying. He's more annoying than our six-year-old son. Like he is annoying. And, you know, he can get, he knows how to push my buttons very well. And I'm hot. <laughs> okay when i like i but i always think to myself I, you know let me tell you the same that i say there are two things you can't get back the words after you've said them in time and so i always think to myself yes i might be feeling this way in this moment but if i say this what is the damage that this could do to the relationship so i say to people i cuss them in my head but i never say it out loud because i value him more than that heated moment, which is again why I said, it is important for people not to make permanent decisions on temporary feelings. Yeah, F your feelings, you know, right there. Yeah. And okay. it's hard. Um, so what, do you, what are your, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy, definitely. Definitely, especially if he's an agitator, you must, you're Jamaican, <laughs> right? You must like, want to say, well, you know, like, a part of okay. that is, is for me, but again, when you, when those 90s <laughs> and the, you know, the etiquette get agitated away, you get to the meat and potatoes, you know? Like, you get somebody pissed off, they're going to tell you how they really feel about you, you know? And again, even when she's pissed, there's no disrespect. Because I like you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, where do you guys? What do you guys think about marriage? What's your stand on marriage? Okay. So this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, say what he said. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 You see, white, man, man, white man's paperwork. But, yeah, I hope you're going but to get married. There's no practice. Yes, we will, I will marry this. So, so here's some the other thing. purposes for it, but man, that white man's paperwork is. Here. We do see marriage as white man's paperwork, um, <laughs> right? Because again, that's exactly what it is, right? It binds people together, all of that different stuff. But are we going to get married? Yes, and that is something that we knew before getting into the relationship, right? We're not, we're not young people. We're in our forties. And we could understand that even though we had both previously been married, that we, like where we were, we didn't have that in our previous relationships. And mm -hmm. had we had that in our previous relationships, we would not have been not married. Um, and so I think that was important. We needed to be on the same page about things. We both like, yes, I, I, want, I want the wedding. I want all of that. But I think again, marriage is white man's paperwork, but we're gonna do it because I think it's also good for our family. It's good for our community. My daughter talks about it all the time. She's like, I can't wait, mommy, until you have the same last name that I do, right? That's really important to her. And so that is something that's important to us. And so, you know, we'll let you guys know. Yeah. Maybe I'll record it. I, don't, I doubt it'll be romantic. Probably be like, marry me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> like, I can't believe he left me at the altar. Like, you got 10,000 people. There. I'm not coming. Shut up. <laughs> It'd be like a little beach. <laughs> and so what do you guys think of like the dating scene now? Like, first of all, like, how did you guys, because you were in Toronto, he's in Arizona. So how did you guys meet? Tinder. So let me tell you the story. This is this. And, and listen, kids don't try this at home. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> So we, this was in the midst of COVID. Um, we, Toronto was in its first lockdown. So, you know, shut down. Um, he was in Rochester at the time because that's where he's originally from, even though he lived in Arizona. You know, when COVID happened, I think a lot of people just, you know, went home to family, all this stuff. So I wasn't looking for anything. I was on Tinder. Swipe, swipe, swipe. I hardly ever swiped. I'd go through like a hundred and I didn't swipe because... I, there was something more that I was looking for more than, you know, 
a, a good looking man. If you didn't have anything on your profile, if you didn't have anything that made me laugh, I wasn't going to swipe. So he had this picture and it was like a complete scowl. Like his face was like a scowl. And I'm like, I like scowl. He made like a sarcastic meter. And he's like, maybe I played a little ball, but that's not him. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to see what he's about. I You're... <laughs> You're spinning. Okay, there you are. I thought I lost you. You still there? Um, here I am. No, his face was yeah, a scowl. So his face was like a complete scowl, but I'm like, you know what? There's more behind this because I appreciate sarcasm. <laughs> Anyways, we swipe on each other and um, we start a conversation. And this is the part where most women go, what? So our first um, conversation uh, was October 18th. Our anniversary is October 28th. So within 10 days of meeting, we cut through all the bullshit and we were in a relationship. We hadn't physically met yet, but we were speaking like six hours a day. We were video calling with all that. I didn't get to Rochester until November. Um, I spent about 10 days. We spent 10 days together. We went on a cross country road trip from Rochester to Greensboro, North Carolina, to Raleigh, North Carolina. Then we went to Queens, New York. Then I came back to Toronto. Once I came back, about a week or so later, he came back to Arizona. And he knew I would not move to Rochester because I don't do coal. Like, I was like seasonal depression, the whole thing. And when he got back to Arizona, he's like, you know what? I'm going to move back. I want you to move with me. Um, or at the very least, I want you to come here for a long period of time. Because again, it was COVID. You know, going back and forth would have been difficult. So he, this was November, he got back to, I think it was the end of November, beginning of December, you were in Arizona. And then I was in I Arizona was in February. Yeah. And so I got here last February. So that's how that story works. It does not work for everyone. Let's be clear. We get that mm -hmm. our story is an anomaly. It is not um, the normal. However, I think it could be. And this is what I'm going to say. Vulnerability is sexy. It's always honesty. Like, for women. <laughs> I used to think. And honesty is sexy for men. Like, put your shit on the table and let her make a choice on whether she want to deal with it or not. Like, that's really how I got down. I mean, I've always got down like that, though. It's like, it, 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 it's, it is what it is. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm somebody's cup of tea. So. Right. And I think I used yeah. to equate <laughs> vulnerability to weakness. Um, I used to think that that's what it was. Um, and again, therapy, it, therapy, I recommend it, black women. We, we need therapy. We got, a, we got a lot going on. Mm. Um, but I used to equate it to uh, weakness. And I remember my therapist says, the life you say you want, this woman you've been carrying with you, she can't go with you to this next stage of your life. Yeah. She's going to have to sit down. And you, like, you need to bench her. That's what she told me. She said, bench this woman. Tell her thank you. She's had to carry you through the things that you needed to go. But the life that you've described to me that you want, she cannot go with you. Um, and so it was important to, like I said, do that inner work and do the things I needed to do. So when, when that time came for a man who saw me in the way that my father had always hoped, like, he sees me the way my father has always hoped a man would see me and take care of me. Am I able to take care of myself? Hell yeah, I've, I've been doing it. I've, I've been working since I was 17 and on my own since I was 20. I've been paying my own bills since I was 20 years old. I've done it, right? However, he sees me in a light that no other man has ever seen me. And that's something that makes my father proud. And I think as women, a lot of the times we carry this, this burden of the strong black woman and we sometimes need to put it down because, listen, no straight man wants to date another man. Put, put your penis away. Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, like people are talking about this strong black woman um, syndrome that we have or whatever that we're carrying around. But I also think that a lot of um, women take on a definition of a strong black woman without even defining that for themselves. Because you are a strong black woman, you know, right? You coming out here telling us, speaking on the truth, talking to us, bringing us these facts, that is strength right there because you're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That is strength. 
So I think we just have to learn to define things for ourselves instead of having people define something for us and then us thinking we need to strap that definition on and then run with it. Let me tell you something you know? about who the strong black woman fallacy. I talk about it in one of my books, No Handouts for Black Girl. The strong black woman thing is a fallacy and the only person it makes better are employers. That is what has happened. This idea of the strong black woman has broken black homes and made white people rich. I'm going to go there, okay? It has helped employers. We give more of ourselves to our employers than we give to our family. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, being the strong black woman, being the boss chick, being all of that is being fed to us and spoon fed to us and girl be independent and you don't need that man and that man is this and this man is that and it's broken black families. But let me tell you who's gotten rich because they've gotten rich off of my back. I have made people millions. And when I met him, I was like, I'm never doing that again. If I'm making millions, I'm making it for this family. When I say I've made people millions, I have made people millions. <laughs> Okay, never mm -hmm. again. But again, it was this strap it on strong black woman. I talk about it in my book. I went to the gynecologist one day, found out that I had they had found cancer cells in me. She told me I could have an operation that could cut the cells off right there in the office. I cut it off, wait in the waiting room for 20 minutes and went to work. My mother cussed me, but I had shit to do because I'm a strong black woman. I literally heard I had you know, cancer cells. We found it, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't even remember what else she said. I just heard you have these two options. I said, I'll choose number one because we can get that done soon. I'm not going to wait. I was in strap ups. They burned it off, told me to sit down for 20 minutes, make sure I was okay. Got back in my car and drove to work. That's what the strong black woman does. I had to be sent home because I text my boss to say, oh, by the way, I'm going to be late because this happened, but I'm coming into work because I have meeting. I went into work. I worked for a couple hours and then I got sent home. But that's what that does for us. If I was in that position with him and with him as, you know, as, as the person with me, I would have never went to nobody's job. That's the problem with this strong black woman. And we need to, it's a social construct. It is a fallacy. Like you said, strength is a woman who stands with her family and makes sure that her kids are raised well and her man goes out into the world good. Yeah. You remember that show, Living Color? And Jim Carrey used to have a, char a character on there, Vera. She was a lady bodybuilder. <laughs> like, that's how dudes look at that yeah. strong black woman yeah. and stuff. Like, <clears throat> just all. <laughs> that's, that's not it, show. You ain't nobody checking that. Not attractive. Nah, no, not attractive at all. But again, if you keep, keep getting fed the same narrative, you believe it. Guess what? People are making money off of us on that strong black woman. But we're also getting sick off of that strong black woman. Diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes and heart attack in our 30s and 40s because we're going hard in the paint, right? We're not taking care of our health because how are you going to take care of your health and exercise when you're working 60 hours a week? Like all of these things, industries are getting rich off of that strong black woman. But a lot of women would go, oh, what's the alternative? Depend on a man? Yeah. Mm. But that's just me. That's just my. And that goes back to the gender roles, too, because there's a lot of people that don't believe in gender roles. They don't want to believe that a woman and a man should carry different roles. There are people that believe that the woman should just what? be able no. to do right. everything. Look, yeah. You know? It, this guy is, 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 is rude, but gender is a fact, choice isn't. Yeah. I want my daughter to have the option to be a. Uh, construction worker or you know one of these male dominated professions if that's what she chooses but let's be 100 percent real if more women were actually choosing these male dominated professions there'd be more women in them right and the fact that there isn't it's, it's kind of like y'all don't even have no desire for that that's the equivalent of me like the white people arguing about immigrant jobs like y'all not uh, washing watermelons Y'all you're not picking corn. Y'all not doing none of that. So what does it even matter to you who's actually doing it? So again, to the high powered feminist lawyer attorney, you know, yeah, you know, be, do you boo. You know what I'm saying? But 
leave the woman that just wants to serve her family alone because ain't nothing wrong with that. Right? And, I, and then nobody talks about that, right? Everybody wants to talk about toxic masculinity, but there's a lot of attack on femininity. And I don't want to call it toxic femininity, but I will call it attack on femininity. Yeah, like I'm forcing you. Like you said, the comments, the abuse is like, you know, if, if she finds value and importance in making me breakfast in the morning, you got people out here that's like, that's whack, you know? That's, uh, like, how dare you? To each day on, you know what I'm saying? But I, I know our grandmothers and great grandmothers used to treat our grand great grandfathers and, and our great grandfathers like that and they were not anywhere nearly as well behaved as we are today. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. No, hundred percent true. I mean, I, I definitely believe a hundred percent in gender roles. I believe as you're saying, gender is a fact. It is a fact that we are women and that women cannot do what men can do. And we There's a reason why we're different. To. Why do we want to? There are certain things in this house I yeah. do not want to do. And I don't have to. And Rob always says it, and it's funny. It's funny how women will fight for equal rights, as they call them, but they still expect the man to die first. We want equal rights, but at the same time, when there's that strange knock on the door, that strange you hear noise. Door knob jiggling. She's not getting up. I'm not. I, we, I, you expect yeah. the man to die first, but you're still out there. You know, all the women that are independent. But as I say on our other show, you know, all the women that are independent are married. Ladies, stop getting bamboozled. And and, oh. and let's be and, and and again, not because again, there's so much flack around. You know the. The, the transgender community, but again, I'm gonna make another statement that gender is real. Let's be honest. All of the argument for, you know, transgender in sports is men becoming women. There's no women becoming men trying to play in the NFL. You dig? That is facts, actually. Because I think they understand That's that strange. would be very dangerous. That is facts. That, 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 that. We, we'll move on from that. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a dangerous it's a dangerous line honestly it's a dangerous line i think the whole world is crossing right now because it's like you know you're you can't tell the truth without stepping on somebody's toes and if you step you're stepping on these people's anybody's toes not not you know anybody's toes by telling the truth it's these feelings it's it's, it's, you're hurting my feelings you know you can make an argument that truth might be subjective a little bit you know I might be on the north side of the park. You might be on the south side of the park. We could see the same event and see and have a different truth. But facts are facts. Two plus two is four. That's a fact. You can take that to Saturn and Jupiter, and it's going to work there too. You know, and and we've started arguing facts, and I think that's that's where it gets really really. That's the slippery slope. When we're arguing facts, that's like if green is no longer green if she can call green purple but it's still the same color like we don't even what color even mean anymore well we're, we're doing things to suit our own narrative right it's easy to create a narrative in your head especially when you're not living the life you want to and so you create a narrative to explain to people why you're not fulfilling the life that you want to you know i talk about something that's very simple in my new book and i'm you know and it offends a lot of people when i was 21, I had a baby, I decided not to have any more children. No one was gonna change my mind, I didn't care. I understood I couldn't date the same way as a woman without children who wanted children. There were certain men who were simply not yoked with me, this whole equally yoked, but I always say there's certain men that were not gonna choose me. I could not give them what they wanted. So what did I look like coming with my child say taking care of mine, but I can't give you what you want. That's a lot of the narrative that are going on. Accept me as I am, right? But I will not give you what you want. People want to treat, like I had to operate in a certain way. I was 21. My womb was fully open. I just had no, you know, I had fundamental beliefs and I was not going to change those beliefs. So what do I look like saying to a man who's everything I want on my list, but I'm like, oh no, you want a kid, but I won't give you one. Please pick me. That's how sometimes we're going in and walking through the world because we have these narratives of what things are supposed to be, but we're not looking at the reality of our situation. He and I are very real. 
about what our situation is now, how we want it to be, how we're going to get there. And this wonderful word I like to use, it's called sacrifice, ladies. And I know it's so tough because the world tells us we don't need to sacrifice because we can have it all. We cannot. <laughs> we cannot have it all. <laughs> it's almost required, you know. It, sacrifice it, it, is important for love. It, it's just what it is. It, it's it's fe sacrifice is feminine energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just I, I don't really see it any other way. Like, this is again, it's gonna sound a little bit out of balance, but it's actually I think it, it's what works. It's the gravity that keeps us from both of us behaving in a certain way. We all know. 80% of the 50% of divorces that end in, of the marriages that end in divorce, the woman files, you know. It's in a woman's nature to contemplate leaving <laughs> more than it is in the man's nature, you know. That's just what it is. You see that in relationship over relationship over relationship. We had a conversation once. My job in the relationship is to make sure that nothing happens to where I'm unhappy in the relationship because now we're in a different space. Her being unhappy in the relationship is kind of normal. It sounds messed up, <laughs> but know. it's kind of normal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me being unhappy in the relationship is when choosing starts to be an option. And a lot of people would, you know, as Jamaicans say, bona fide um for for a statement like that because again the world is supposed to gravitate and gear towards the pleasing of women so you know me saying things like rob is my job me you know saying things like again i uh he you know i do the things for him that quite frankly he doesn't want to do you know him you know he made a comment on what does it look like when i need to find my socks and she's out there working for the man like i just want my sock like where's my wife and for a lot of people that again because that's not what we're being taught and you know again gender roles are important there's feminine and masculine if facts are facts it is what it is yeah 100 yeah, percent um it that's what all it boils down to it's not us living our truth it's living the truth thank you girl actually i'm tired and of people on is. show so. talking about but this is my truth this is I need to see my like, truth. Like, girl, go yep. sit down somewhere. Man, it's only like 20 <laughs> different type of people, man. That's why they got astrology and stuff like that. You know, your experience yeah. it makes is what makes you unique, but it, it, personality That's types, right. like, it, it, it's, it's not 7,000, it's not 7 billion different versions of people. It just ain't. But it's only one me. There's only one her. There's only one you. You know? But we ain't snowflakes. Like, come on. <laughs> X, yeah, X. God um, so world. talk to us, Shiva. You're also sorry. I said God never broke the world. He keeps using it over and over and over and over. Again. Straight up, straight up. Right? Clearly, it keeps coming out the same right? way. Like we keep seeing it. It's it's like it hasn't changed yet. Yeah, you know. Um, no, but that's a fact. Um, but talk to us about what you guys have in co have coming up, like. <laughs> oh, I'm oh. Um, okay, I so <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> like, he, just, he just shows up. So I do have a new book. So I currently have eight books on the market. I have a six book series called uh, Sienna. Um, I have Sienna, the complete series that I put out um, right before Christmas. And it's basically the all six books condensed into one. I also have a, another book called No Handouts for Black Girls. I have an upcoming book that will be um, published in March called Fuck Your Feelings, um, A Journey to Imperfect Love. Because like I said, you know, we are far from perfect. Yeah. Um, You're dragging your boy in the book. Man. Yes, he is all up in the book because he was, <laughs> he was my journey to my I imperfect am. love. <laughs> <laughs> I am not dragging you. I am speaking <laughs> the truth. Uh, <laughs> so I do have the new book, Fuck Your Feelings, coming up. We uh, go every night on Fuck Your Feelings, the show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. Like you said, we're going to be doing this till, you know, like we decide that we don't want to do it anymore. But we're having fun with it. Um, again, the way we think isn't, doesn't seem to be the, the norm because I think everybody wants to be politically correct and everybody is, um, afraid of being canceled or as Rob likes to call it now censored, cause that's what cancel culture is. It's just 
censorship on people thinking differently. Yeah. Um, and there's, again, we're not unique. We're not anything. We just have said, you know what, this is our, this is our journey, right? We're not trying to be couple goals. We're just two people trying to stay together. Yeah. And go ahead, babe. Yeah, you can't cancel me because I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care. And do you care? Like, no, but beyond that, like, <laughs> like, seriously, that's the whole thing that bugs me about cancel energy is people having a fear of it. It's not even a real thing. Like, most, like, take Dave Chappelle, for instance. Most of the people screaming cancel Dave Chappelle never were his supporters. You dig? So, never. You, you were never for me. So why would I care that you were like, yeah, I boycott you. Like, you never bought a ticket, bro. Yeah. You never did nothing for me. So, yeah. like, that, that cancel energy is just, again, that's like for kind of that follow along, that get along, get along gang stuff they be talking about. Like, man, like, I don't care about that. Like, are, it's okay if you don't like me. Because we're not, we're not here to be, to be liked. Uh, I'd rather be respected than liked. Um, and oh, that's, you don't do that. And you, that was, you will do yeah, that. <laughs> that's always been, been our things, right? We're not, we're not out here to be liked. We want to be respected. But at the same time, we do see that there are conversations that need to be had in our community. And that's, again, why we don't care if there are two people on or you know, 200 people on. Every week we get up there and we have the conversations and we bring people in. And what we've been finding is people are really like, they walk yeah. away and they're like, True. you know, we get messages like, damn, like, never even thought about that before but you guys just like blew our minds and that makes it worth it every single yeah, week at least once a week and like she said it's we maybe we think differently but i know we definitely talk differently and that's why we said changing the conversation not about like just romantic relationships about black relationships that's what we mean like mama tt cousins everybody you know like it's it's changing these conversations to make sure these conversations are happening because that's the only way we're going to really repair our community is by talking about what's going on and what we really got going on. No, it's, it's extremely important to make sure that we're having these conversations. You're speaking about the truth and you're being real because you don't find the authenticity out there. People all often talk about being authentically me and this and that, but it's a standard that you have to follow when you are looking for those likes or you're looking for that content to make sure that, you know what I mean? So it's a breath of fresh air to actually be able to speak candidly, honestly and openly and you guys are just, you're doing the damn thing. So yeah, man, big up yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, and we never wanted to curate are like, like we don't even really talk about the topic until we're you know on the couch like sometimes it changes yeah, but it's like but yeah. when you're being yourself you don't have to get into character you you know what i mean it's just you you just do what you do she she's she's very much like that all the time like she dances in walmart to the walmart music <laughs> so when y'all see her shimmy and stuff on here that's not her <laughs> I'm telling y'all. Yeah. When you see a sale, right? The red right ticket prices. But I love her because I had that energy close to me. I'm never, otherwise, it wouldn't be in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 No, it's important. It's important. I love it. And I just want to just say thank you guys so much for joining me today. Well, I appreciate well. you guys. Um, yeah, man, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I talked to you guys a bit about the docu series that we have coming up, and you done know you guys are definitely um, going to be a big part of that. I can't wait to join you or for you guys to join us in that conversation. So, um, but before I let you go, just please let everybody know where we can find you. Um, again, what day you're online, and then. I need to get a quote from you. Okay, Something I'm powerful. Ready. Like okay, so you can find us. We have two shows, actually. So we've got Fuck Your Feelings, the show, um, which happens every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So again, that's every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and it's Fuck Your Feelings, the show. We also have another show um called not your typical girl talk he's our male conscious on that show i like to call them so it's me and my two other girlfriends and robin that's called not your typical girl talk um you can also find me um on instagram under toshiba monique so my first name is toshiba my middle name is monique so toshiba monique 
T-O-S-H-I-B-A-M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. And if you look me up and you want to buy my books, you can find them all on Amazon. I'm also on Barnes & Noble online, but um, Amazon is where I happen to get most people. So Toshiba Billings on Amazon, and you should find all eight of my books that are available. I still can't believe I say eight books. Sorry. That's <laughs> phenomenal. Sometimes I impress myself. Hey. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, when did you start anyways? When was your first My book first put out? My first book was published April 1st, 2020. So this is what happened. I did the six part series. I published a new book every single month. Um, so they started like the first one, I think was maybe 40 or 50 pages. The last, by the, I got to the sixth one, it's probably like a hundred and something pages. So my first book in the, the book series is April 1st. I think it was April, May, June, July, August, September. That my sixth book was published then. And then my seventh book, No Handouts for Black Girl was actually published March 30th of 2021. And then the next book is going to be published almost to the day. It's going to be March 29th of 2022. So uh, it would have been nine books in two years. And then between him and our creative director and my strategist partner and my editor, I cannot write another book for 18 months. So <laughs> I will have all nine books because honestly, I, he always says your boss is a fiat which is me because I give myself all these crazy deadlines. Yeah. I've got to get everything done. Like I've got his spreadsheet and things for him to do. And then like, after I'm done this, I'm going to go and edit because I've got some things to do. But um, so they've said to me, no more writing, focus on the things that you need to do. And so I'm going to take an 18 month break, but I do have another six book series that I kind of started that I'll be doing in 2024. Wow, so check it, like <laughs> eight books from 2020 to 2021. Yeah. Yeah. They oh cover gosh. from nasty to serious. <laughs> they do. I, I'm all over the place. Like the six book series is like black erotica and sex and all that stuff. And then I have no handouts for black girl that is like very empowering and all that stuff. And now I have How uh, Fuck Your Feelings, which will be more of an autobiography in terms of my journey uh, to finding him. Yeah. No. A couple different moves. Ooh, all right, we're here for it. <laughs> we're here for it. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I always like to get like a quote or something that you kind of go by, um, maybe daily that you guys would like to share with us. So I've said it a couple of times. I'm going to say it again. This is the guiding principle for me in our relationship, which is do not make permanent decisions on temporary feelings. Um, I, I get up every day in addition to choosing him every day, I got up every day with that in mind. And we have like, when, when we have a show called fuck your feelings, we literally live a fuck your feelings life. Um, and so I know that I want to ride this relationship out into the sunset. I will be buried beside him, probably on top of him. Cause I'm that obsessed with him. I, I hope you don't go first, but either way. <laughs> but you know we it's the guiding principle of our relationship and i think that's important for people to even have as well what is the guiding principle of your relationship yeah like what's the purpose of y'all being together like what's the reason because companies have mission statements and all of that and for me the one i like to close with is just kind of my a guiding like principle is just you know only place where you will find work before success is the dictionary like it's you have to love the grind in order to achieve the success like you have to love the day-to-day -day of it because if you stay down on anything long enough you will become successful at it i guarantee you that god that was good because that is relationship if you stay down long enough and you put in the work that needs to be put in, and this is going to be actually something I say, I know we've run over time, but I think we have to, I want the ladies to think about, you know, the friend that they have in their life and maybe, or maybe it's them that is always constantly in a new relationship, in a new dating relationship, in a new boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. I'd love for you to ask her why, or if it's yourself, ask yourself why. I'm already going to tell you what the answer is. You hit a rough path. That's usually what happens, right? Because relationships are supposed to be fun and they're supposed to be great and they're supposed to be light and they're supposed to be wonderful. And the moment you hit a rough patch, you don't want to go through the rough patch, you just replace the person. Like he said, most women leave relationships. I 
think I've left every single one of my relationships, if, I, if I'm honest, right? And it's because we want we want the fun. When it gets hard, when it gets tough, when you really have to work, that's the true test of a relationship. And it's the like, worst place to leave anybody because that becomes fuel to the fire a lot of times. You know what I mean? Like those, like when I go both ways, you know, like those. I used to be a zero. Now look at me, you know, type of energy, you know, because that, but that is the worst place to leave someone is when, like, because it, like, that's the worst state to leave a relationship in a, is in a bad spot. Like I said, not in the plans at all, not in the stars, but I've, I'm confident if we ever were to just in a relationship contract get to a point where it's like, hey, maybe this doesn't make sense anymore. I guarantee we would still be just as tight as we are today, we would still communicate in the same manners. We would still never disrespect one another. Like, I, again, I think that's just a better way of moving forward. And it, you know what I mean? It's like all or nothing. It's like, no, maybe it shouldn't be that much of an extremity. You know what I mean? Maybe it should be just your best foot forward. And if that's not enough, then that's okay. Yeah. Well, I like that. It's it's all about that. It's all about the respect. Like once you have that respect and honesty, you are winning right there. Oh, that, that part. Right there is a good it's, it's, it's the honesty. And that's what allows us to have some of the conversations we have because we always come. Listen, I say every conversation I have with him, it comes from a place of love. It's, there's nothing negative behind it. It's always a place of love. It's a place of honesty. You know, we've created a safe space in our, you know, people talk about safe spaces for children and so forth. What is the safe space in your relationship? You need to create that safe space in your relationship. And often, I'm sorry, as black women, we're not creating a safe space in the relationship for our men. And my biggest thing has always been like, you know, you can't, you can't see it right now, but Rob is six foot nine. We live in Arizona. He's a six foot nine black man in Arizona. And as much as people go, oh my God, how tall of you? Once that wears off, he's a six foot nine man in Arizona. And so when he's out into the world, I understand all of the stuff that he is faced with that I don't get to. I'm a cute five foot five, sweet smile and all of this. Like I don't present the same threat as he does. So when he walks through those doors, I make it a point of trying to create a space for him that he wants to come home to. It's again, are we perfect? No, I'm Jamaican. Like I, I, I'm fired sometimes, but that again is still the foundation of our relationship because of the no disrespect, right? And and all of those things are so important. So again, what is the safe space in your relationship? Have you created a safe space in your relationship? And I think that's what I love people to ask themselves or ask their partner, what is our safe space? What does that look like for us? Because that's what's gonna keep us together. You know, we always say, you know, instead of focusing on what we will not do, to talk about what we will do to stay together. That's more of the way we go. What will we do to stay together? What does our worst look like? A lot of, everybody knows their best. Right, you can say, my best is I got this and we live in this house and we live here and we got this and we got these investments and you know, we're killing it. What does our worst look like? I want to know that God forbid anything happens to me and he has to teach me how to walk again or God forbid wipe my ass if he's gonna do it because you know, and, and I he wants the same for me. We need to talk about what that what that looks like. So that's kind of been our thing. And there isn't a lot we will not do to stay together because that's when we got into this relationship that was our goal our goal was to stay together that is it like it's the number one driving force to staying together yeah it's a wrap i'm not even trying to shoot again yeah he told everybody he's like she leaves me because he always says i'm gonna leave him she said he's leaving he's like i'm good i'm you're gonna go back to his whole day that's all he gonna do he listen that no strip club in any city where this man would be would be safe. All six foot nine of his ass would be going there hoeing. He go back to his fall days. Listen, this man was hoeing, so I gotta keep him safe from the streets. <laughs> Taking you from the streets. <laughs> She's saving you. She's saving you right now. Man. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> Oh I'm keeping the streets safe. I don't safe. know if I'll be doing all of that. I just know I'm not trying to be in a relationship. So whatever happens in the interim, but that's off the table. Like, you know, some people 
that that's off the table, like when you don't sign a deal in time and they just like, oh, contract negotiation broke down. Like, that, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Like, again, how many times are you going to restart? You know what I mean? Like, you know, that that's eventually you got to put your foot down and be like, I'm going to make this work. You know what I mean? Like, we, we people have that ability if they so desire. It's called discipline. And that's what we decided. It's, it's you know, we, we have this funny joke. We're like, ain't nobody else want us. We, I mean, I think people can see us. It's very clear that if we both got onto the market, very likely, do I. again, like, you know, we do okay. Like, you know, he sees my DMs and I used to see his. And that's what you don't realize. If you're in my DM, he actually sees, I see his. But anyways, um, so we're, we're very well aware we can do okay. But we always kind of operate like nobody else wants us. This is all we got. Look, man, again, I, the, the, one, the, the celebrity couple we look at the most, like Jay-Z and Beyonce, trust me, they look at each other some days like, you ain't it. You ain't it. <laughs> but they not getting divorced. Or not, but I guarantee you they look at each other on some days like, yeah, you ain't it. Hey, I'm, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm getting up out of here. Today. <laughs> and that's okay. Again, that's okay. But the next day I wake up and I still do the Right. I'm going to choose him over anybody every day, and he's going to do the same. So choose each other, people. This is Black Love, hey. and we love it. Yes. Love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, man. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys for coming on. It was a great conversation. Thank you. Um, thank you. Great interview. We appreciate it. And we look forward to the documentary. Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely be in. He, listen, he always yawns. I swear he's not tired. That's he gonna just, be a trademark. Bro. He just always yawns. Trademark, like Bernie. It's, it's, it's not you. He yawns on our show. It's okay. He yawns in the middle of conversations. It's a very serious one. Games. He yawns in basketball games. He just—it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. today was brought to you by BBL TV so make sure you guys check yeah. it out you guys want to make sure you have BBL TV as well they're definitely doing some major things in the community so you definitely want to and thank you so much for us we out. appreciate All right. you thank you to everybody who gave us thank comments you. have a great night alright you guys too okay yeah bye yeah. What a great conversation. What a great conversation, guys. That was definitely um, a lot, a lot to take in. Um, so I I'm always like to go back and rewatch the interviews because, you know, there's like little things that you might miss here and there. There was so much good information that we need to take in um, for the women, for the gentlemen. I mean, just there was just a lot. And of course, I want to thank everybody for joining the show today. Today's show was brought to you, of course, by BBL TV, Black Business Live TV, bringing our culture, community, and commerce together on one screen. BBL TV is a space for us, by us, to advertise, connect, share stories, and news content. So make sure you don't miss out on the opportunity to share your story, indulge it in others, or advertise your products and services today. So make sure you connect with uh, BBL TV. Um, because they bring new stories we live brought to you live 24 7 okay but i gotta say a big big shout out to f your feelings the show um both Toshiba and rob came through sharing and dropping too many gems for us today too many like we have a lot to think about um, whether you're in a relationship currently you're looking to be in a relationship whatever your status is they brought information for the better of our community and this is exactly what this is black love right here they they showed us what black love is black love is honesty black love is being truthful black love is discipline black love is respect um and that is just and it's being real being real with your partner being real in this commitment, staying committed fully 100% to whatever it is that you guys decided to do at the beginning of your relationship, um, staying committed to that, staying committed to that. So it's really important to, number one, establish those um, 
those those things that you guys have establish your principles establish what it is that you want out of your relationship make sure that you're on the same path and always have respect for each other and always tell the truth and i touched on i just said it one thing not not your truth the truth because only the truth is real that's it your truth maybe your your way of seeing a certain thing but the truth is what it really is and at the end of the day it's it's f your feelings because feelings are fleeting and your feelings don't last one minute you're feeling this way and then in 10 15 20 minutes ladies you know what i mean like we're not feeling that way anymore you know what i mean and gentlemen too sometimes you may be upset whatever it is um the feeling is there and then it's gone so it's really important to to just f the feelings and get to the get to the nitty gritty the real truth um very refreshing conversation i'm really excited about the docuseries coming up um also we have some great news about the docuseries we are going to have some sponsors for the docuseries so you guys want to check out king aqua um, king aqua is a new alkaline water company serving the gta providing quality water that has so many amazing health benefits such as increasing energy improving metabolism um, it slows aging reduces bone loss better hydration and it's sodium free so stay hydrated, drink water, mind your business, call King Aqua today for your daily dose of alkaline water. Okay, he's right here on Instagram. I am King Aqua. Shan Punch also offers a wide variety of healthy products from peanut punch, soursop, beetroot, booster shots, sea moss, sorrel, green seasoning, pepper sauce, snack sauce, and so much more. All these products are made fresh to order. They all contain uh, King Aqua alkaline water. Um, so reach out and grab your premium products today. You can find them on Instagram as well at Chan Punch. Um, we also have a big announcement for any of you who are business owners. You have products um, that you would like to showcase at a pop-up shop. Um, there's a pop-up shop being curated right now by Revelier Afrique. Um, they're looking for Black History Month um, exhibits for their art, culture, fashion pop-up shop that's happening at Bradley City Center. It's happening February 18th to March 1st. So it's a two week period that you basically bring your products there. Um, they will display them for you and have them sold and you can get in touch um, with them and try to figure out how you can get your, your products in the store. Um, it's just a two week um, thing that they're running at the Bramley City Centre. If you know Revelier Afrique, I'm probably not saying it properly, um, but the store owner jo Julianne has a store actually in the Bramley City Centre upstairs, um, but the pop-up shop is going to be running for the two weeks in the downstairs location. It's in a in a storefront and she's just going to have um, a, a bunch of different things happening. I believe they're going to have a fashion show, live music, art exhibit, and there's a lot of other things that she is going to have as well. So guys, there's a lot happening. Make sure that you link in the bio, click the link for the, um, for the questionnaire, answer all the questions for the, um, the black love in the six. Um, right now, I'm also looking for your videos, okay? So for the first episode, our very first episode is going to be basically about what our definitions are around black love, black love versus love you know, what your definition personally is of love. Like, what is your definition? I want to hear from you. I want to know what your definition is of love because, you know, we are all different. We're all unique. So I want to hear what you have to say. So make sure that you send me a video of yourself. Um, send me the video, put it in my inbox, um, send me an email um, and just talk about it. Talk about all the things. Like, what do you think love is? What, are you, what is your definition of love? What is the criteria that love has to, like, you know, just, just put all the things in there. Let me know all of the things that you're thinking. All right. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this was a phenomenal, phenomenal way to start off the week. A lot um, of thought provoking conversation. And that's what Black Love in the Six, the docuseries is going to be about. This is not about, this is not about your feelings. This is about talking about conversation that needs to be had in our community. Um, just you know, nudging you to, to think differently and to open up your mind and um, change the way that we are doing certain things in our relationships, in our communities, in our homes, and in, in every aspect, all right? 
So I want to leave you guys with that. I want to thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. And I will definitely see you same time, same place next week with another fabulous guest. All right.